Well, here we are on Bob Stiles' dairy farm. 1965, when we were trying to buy this land, we talked with Bob Stiles and his sister Cornelia Montague, and they wanted to know what we wanted to do with the land, and we couldn't tell them. <laughs> we knew. But uh, their brother Wayne, who had been a teacher in uh, the South, deceased, had said that he always hoped there'd be a school in this land. And there is. And what a school it is. <laughs> it's a real pleasure for me and a privilege to join all of you in welcoming Jonathan Lash as the sixth president of Hampshire College. Having enjoyed that position myself, I can honestly say that I envy Jonathan. And I think probably Adele Simmons, the third president, and uh, Greg Prince, the fourth president, who are here today, would feel the same way. Jonathan, you occupy one of the most exciting, challenging, and potentially rewarding positions in higher education. Hampshire now has more than 10,000 alumni, and they're out there in the world doing good work and I ref are reflecting, I think, the values that uh, Hampshire has been, has been expressing from its opening day. One of those great values, of course, is to disagree, to think otherwise, and I hope that continues. Hampshire was planned just after World War II, and the world was in a period of immense change with nuclear threats and space flights and computers and international tensions, and population growth. But those challenges and issues seem tame compared with what we face today. Our world is changing more rapidly, and the threats to our planet are more ominous. Hampshire was created, as you well know, as an agent of change to prepare young people to cope with and respond to these great threats. It was the belief of the founders that young people are capable of much more independence and creativity if they are freed from the often stultifying routine of lectures, exams, grade point averages, and credit hours as a definition of education. Hampshire, following the initial proposal in 1958 for a new college, the new college plan, dethroned the course, dethroned the course at the unit of knowledge. For over 40 years now, Hampshire's founders, faculty, and successors have created an educational program that stimulates and nourishes the innate curiosity, imagination, individuality, and passion, passion of each of its students. From kindergarten days, the word no meant to be able to recite our ABCs or do our gazintas, two gazinta four, two times. without necessarily thinking about the meaning of what we know, how to integrate with that, that with what else we have learned, how to puzzle, how to wonder, how to distill and act, reflecting in our actions our own ethical and moral standards. All of this helps make our graduates become responsible, inquiring, curious, active, ever learning human beings. That is and always will be, I hope, Hampshire's goal. Hampshire is ever challenged by the charge delivered by Franklin Patterson, the founding president, that the college be a series of approximations, always changing as new challenges arise. There's always the risk that success will breed satisfaction and that the new challenges will be addressed with old answers. With the renewal implicit in the inauguration of a new leader, I think it is appropriate to ask whether Hampshire is living up to Patterson's charge, or is it in stasis, bound by a new orthodoxy? Jonathan, I'm confident you, with the support of the faculty, students, staff, alumni, trustees, townspeople, will perpetuate Hampshire as a significant voice in preparing us for all we do not yet know. Archibald MacLeish, the poet laureate, spoke at the first inauguration, the inauguration of Franklin Patterson, on October 3, 1970, 42 years ago. He said, I do not know, ladies and gentlemen, how it is with you, but I think for myself, all of, of, of this all but impossible commitment 
And I, as I look around at the faces of the men and women who have made it, I feel a surge of excited hope. We may be present at a greater moment than we know. And as you all know, to know is not enough. Emily Dickinson had two lines that I think encapsulate Hampshire in my mind. Wonder is not precisely knowing and not precisely, not precisely knowing not. Wonder is not precisely knowing and not precisely knowing not. <laughs>